In some previous videos, I showed you how powerful it can be to create a pro forma income statement in Excel. And the reason you want to do this is that if you do it properly by putting formulas in instead of just numbers, you can change some of the variables and see how it impacts uh, things like NPV and IRR. So up here, I have these factors up here. And down here, I actually have formulas. Let me just show the formulas so you can see that I've put formulas in for sales revenue. Sales revenue being price times quantity. And then I have a factor in here that adjusts for um, a possible growth rate in sales. Now, to um, keep this video shorter, I'm going to just uh, provide a link to how I created the pro formal. What I want to do here is show you how you can make this a lot more interesting than just changing a number here, say going from $400 to $350. What if we can't sell it for $400? We can sell it for $350. We can see that impacts NPV and IRR. What if we can't go back to the original? What if we can't sell a million units of it? What if we only sell $800,000? How does that impact NPV, et cetera? Now, these are useful, but we can make it even more interesting by making some of these variables here random. And we can do that with a Monte Carlo simulation. So here I have the exact same spreadsheet here, but rather than just toss in a number for price and a, no and a number for starting sales, I'm going to make some assumptions here. I'm going to assume that the mean sales is 1 million and that its standard deviation is 250,000. I'm also going to assume that the, the mean price is 400 and the standard deviation is 75. Now, rather than just change these numbers, I want to put in something so that it will randomly generate different numbers here. So I'm going to put in here for sales equals, and I'm going to use the norm inverse function, function, and then it asks for a probability, and I'm going to type in R-A-N-D, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. What R-A-N-D does is it generates a random number between 0 and 1, so it's generating a probability. And so each time it's going to generate a different number. I'm going to put in the mean of 1 million, and I'm going to put in the standard deviation of 250,000, and I'm going to close that up. And you can see that sales have changed, and they will change and um, normally you can hit the F9 key, but the uh, software I'm using to record this doesn't allow me to use that. But if I just type a number in here anywhere in any cell, you see how it changed um, what was there. So this number will keep changing randomly with a mean of uh, 1 million and a standard deviation of 250,000. Let me do that for price as well. So again, instead of just assuming a price of 400, Let's use that norm inverse function. And again, I'm going to go rand, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and I'm going to put in the mean and the standard deviation. And you can see now the price is $546. So it's going to generate different numbers here. So I'll just type in a number here and you can see it changes the number, changes both of these which are going to impact NPV. But I don't want to do just do this once. I want to do this a bunch of times and then average it to see what the NPV and the IRR will be um, with a um, many replications. This is what we call a Monte Carlo simulation. Sort of a tribute to Monte Carlo where you know, the country that's um, very big into gaming. So let's see what we can do here. All right, I'm going to do a thousand replications, but you can do 10,000 replications or more if you'd like. 
So I'm going to put a 1 in here. And then I'm going to fill this table by going to this drop down menu. Below the sigma, there's a little, um, it says fill. And if I hit the you know, menu button, I can say series. This is a column. And I'm going to go from 1 to 1,000. And I'll hit OK. And it fills it up there. Okay, so it'll go all the way down to 1,000. What do I want to put here? I want to put the NPV that I calculated over here. So I'm going to say equals, and this is the NPV. And then I'm going to put the IRR here, equals this. And you see every time I type something in there, I get a different answer. Now I want to replicate this a thousand times. So I'm going to cover this whole table, and I can cover this by um, highlighting this and then hitting Control Shift Down Arrow key. And I'm going to go to the Data tab and the What If analysis, and I'm going to go to Data Table. This happens to be in a column, so you just leave the row empty. And you simply pick an empty cell here. The empty cell allows Excel to do the calculation before it fills the table. So it just needs a cell so that it can, it can work out the calculation. Just hit OK. And you'll notice it filled my table here. So let me just format this, make it look a little nicer. So I'm going to make this, oh, let's say dollars but I'm going to get rid of the, I don't need the pennies, and I'm going to make this uh, percentage. Percentage, and let me show a couple of decimal places as well. All right, so here we have this information here, and you can see in each replication we get a different answer. We, here we have a negative NPV, and a very low IRR. Here we have a, a positive NPV of 60 over 65 million and a positive IRR of 30.43%, um, etc. So what can we do? We could calculate some descriptive statistics for this if we sh so desired. So for example, I can find the mean here. I can use the average function and go from here, and again I'm going to go shift, um, control shift down arrow key. Maybe I'll just remember that cell 1006. Um, close it up, and I get an average of 16 million. And for the standard deviation, I can do this as well. All right, equals STDEV. Um, you can just do that, or you can say dot .p. They both give you the same answer. This is a sample, so you don't want to use dot .s. And again, I'll just cover this up here. And I get a standard deviation. I can get the median. And I can see what, what I have here, median in this case being um, 11 and a half million. I can also do some percentiles here. And so I can use the function percentile, and I'm going to use dot .inc, which means it includes all the data. It asks you for the array, okay, so for the all the numbers. And then you have to put in a percentile that you want it to be, so I'm going to put in 10% here, close a parenthesis, and I get this. I can copy it down, it'll give me the 25th percentile. So what's it saying here? It's going. It's saying that 90% um, of the time it will be, NPV will be greater than this. All right, these I should format so I can see these a little bit better. Let's see, dollar sign, and then 
we can get rid of those pennies, right? Before it looked funny that this was a, it looked like it was a bigger number than this number. So 90, 75% of the time, it's going to be greater than negative 10 million. Likewise, we could do this for IRR. In fact, let me just copy these. Um, these labels here, and I'll make that mean IRR. And again, I can do the same thing, equals average and the standard deviation. some format here, percent, and show a couple of decimal places, and then median. And let's do the percentiles as well. in and then give it the percent we want close up the parenthesis let me make that a percent amount uh, oops I made a mistake there let's see let me see if I can fix that equals PR Again, highlight it, comma, all right, that looks better, percent, and we're going to expand the decimal places, and then I'll just copy this down. So 75% of the time, in this case, you expect it to be IRR to be greater than 9.3%. So this is a really a great way to take this pro forma income statement and rather than just changing arbitrarily the sales number or the price, we can use a Monte Carlo simulation by using that data table to create this and then to generate different NPVs and IRRs and then to get you know, some averages, standard deviations, and some other descriptive statistics. It gives us a good way for really understanding uh, the, the um, randomness of dealing with this problem, right? We have a marketing department. They think we're going to sell a million units. They think we're going to sell it at 400, but in reality, they don't know. And by incorporating the Monte Carlo simulation, we can provide a more significant or sophisticated method for analyzing this pro forma income statement and this project that we're looking at.